Welcome to my third video in my, well, I guess you could call it, how to get most mounts in Guild Wars 2 series. So this one is going to cover the skimmer. So right before I get started, there's a few things which you will need in order to get this mount. First off, you will need the Parcel Fire expansion. That's probably self-explanatory. The next thing you need to do is you need to uh, have completed probably Sparking the Flame at least one time to have your character actually show up in uh, this city right here, M Noon, which is uh, the starting point where I'm starting off to get the mount. The next thing you will need, according to the wiki, is you will need 4 gold in order to buy this. You will also need 50 trade contracts, which are these things here, which honestly you can get from doing nearly any event in Parts of Fire maps. So there are a diamond a dozen. You can also find them by just like scavenging random bone piles and random sand piles. They honestly show up everywhere, and if you're really desperate for them, just hang around this area long enough and there will be an event spawning called Casino Blitz. You complete it. You kill the legendary at the end, and it'll give you a hero's choice chest, and one of the choices you can pick is a hundred trade contracts in your bag, just ready to go, and then you have enough for this. Another, th the one last thing which you will need is you will need the third mastery completed for your raptor already, which is canyon jumping. Otherwise, this, um, the thing which we're going for will just, like, the skimmer mastery and buying the skimmer in general will just straight up not show up. So, if you're wondering how masteries work and you're kind of new to the game, I'll explain them. If you don't already know how they work, then you can skip ahead because I will be, be including timestamps in this video. So, just really quickly explaining them. Uh, masteries are generally um, these points you get. Like, you can get mastery points by doing a number of things. You have already gotten one by just completing the first path of fire mission to uh, get here, sparking the flame. You get more from completing the story. You can also find them by defeating the bosses, such as the Dijin in the Dominion of Vabia, much later parts of Fire Map. And you can also find them in places like right up here uh, by just communing with them. You just go up to them, press F to interact with them, and then you can click a button, and your character will pretty much channel some kind of energy into it. And then once you're, they're done channeling it, you will get a single mastery point, just like you get a single hero point from communing in average bacteria maps, like, uh, for instance, Blood Tide Coast, or Queensdale, or the Mesitra province, all that kind of stuff. Right, now that all the, that's done and explained, I'll actually show you how to get to the place where you buy a skimmer. So, as you can see, I've generally right now gone outside at noon and we've gone over here. The general path we'll be taking is going down here, following this road here, going through Destiny's Gorge, going into the Alone Riverlands on the next map, and uh, generally then just going this way and avoiding all quicksand. Yeah, uh, there'll be quicksand in the next map, and uh, don't be a hero and don't what I do what I did in the past, thinking, oh, I can just jump into it for a tiny while, and I can jump right back out. My mount should be able to take most of the damage. Quicksand will melt your health, and it'll kill you quite quickly, and you don't want to do that, because then, if you have um, a new player who's uh, new at the game and they'll try who tries to save you from the quicksand, they'll most likely die too, making you both just need to pay waypoint fees to get to the nearest waypoint and teleport yourselves out of there, and you're both lo losing silver from that, and I don't want that. So, as you can see here, I pretty much made just the beeline over to um, the right side of the map and the, um, whatchamacallit, the um, desert path. The reason why there's suddenly randomly Choya and Sand Sharks here is because there's actually a race going on, and, uh, these two characters here are actually racing on their raptors. Luckily, though, they don't have me to contend with because uh, I'm not doing the race. I'm just following this path to get to where I want, but annoyingly, I will have to uh, deal with the sand sharks. So yeah, if a race is going on and you're not familiar with dodging all the obstacles, just either maybe you wait for, until it's finished or follow a different path to get to your destination. <laughs> this is kind of funny. So apparently... Well, I don't know if this is the direction the race should be taking, but for a short while there, I was actually, like, outracing the races because it looked like those two players hadn't actually mastered the canyon jumping ability, meaning the raptor can't actually jump as far, and I have. Oh, hmm. you've ever come across any of these, um, fanged iboga? Try and avoid them. They're super annoying to face. Just, like, don't go near them. They aren't friendly. They'll kill you something shocking. Oh, and by the way, they might be, as you can see here, occasionally forged here. Try and ignore them if you can, just jump over them. You're not here to complete missions, you're not here to save people. I mean, if you really want, you can pause this guide right now, stop and save any people you happen to find them there with the forge, but uh, generally most players don't like to complete all the maps or events all the time, otherwise it just gets overwhelming. I'm one of those players as well. 
Yeah, and um, now here you are at the uh, entrance to the next map. You've gone through Destiny's Gorge, pretty easy, and here's the Alolian Riverlands. Honestly, one of my favorite maps in the game. Because, oh boy, oh boy, is the um, uh, south end of it really lush and nice. There's a reason why it's called the Riverlands. So, the first thing I'm going to be doing here is just spinning right after around and going this way. Because, um, well, that's the general direction that the, uh, the ranch is in. It's, yeah, it is a ranch. I was wondering why I was using the wrong terminology, but it is a ranch. It's a skimmer ranch. Huh. Yeah, so right here is apparently the Hydra. Best to always just avoid them. They, um, they're really angry, really deadly. Oh, <laughs> even another one. Yeah, just try not to get near them, otherwise they'll rain literal meteors from the sky. I just know magic, apparently, and I don't know why. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about before. Got some quicksand. You might think, oh, I can jump over there. Don't try it. You seriously don't want to try it. Just like that meme of, like, oh, one saying don't try it to Anakin before he, like, jumps and gets cut in the half. That will be you. You will be Anakin getting cut in half, except in this case, it'll be quicksand and you'll be drowning in it. Yeah, honestly, this map can get kind of annoying just because of how much quicksand there is. But again, don't try and go through it. Don't try and, like, rub your raptor up against that portal. It will do nothing. It's a sand portal. It's a jackal-only thing. Basically, rubbing your raptor up the, against that will be as useless as... It will be as useless as going, Excuse me, I'd like to uh, fly a plane. And then you go to an airport and, uh, instead of a plane, you attach cardboard wings to a tractor. I don't even know why you do that. That's what I mean. Like, it's, it's that stupid. Don't try and, like, go through sand falls with the raptor. It just won't work. Yeah, so as you can see, this map is honestly kind of atmospheric, and it's also super duper annoying with just how much quicksand it has. In fact, um, we're almost at the Skimmer Ranch, and apparently this is also a good way to just <laughs> avoid everything and get there, which is great. So yeah, you won't, don't want to be jumping down there at all, because even with the canyon long jumping the mastery, you can get over all that, but uh, all that was pretty much quicksand. There have been many times something has basically uh, snagged me and brought me in there. Yeah, so once you're here, make sure the first thing you do is get the waypoint. Because if you some, for some reason were to die here, you don't want to go all the way back to somewhere else and, uh, well, waste a whole heap of progress getting here. So yeah, so once you're here, you don't even have to talk to the lady over here who's responsible for the heart. You can immediately just press F on a borrowed train skimmer and start doing stuff. So one of the things that will be needed to complete with this heart is you just go over a pile of rations like so... And then you just find someone with an apple over their head, such as this person here. It may be a little hard to actually get up here because uh, my skimmer has been trained to, uh, well, when you hold down the space bar, or A like I'm doing right now because I'm using a controller, generally um, you will fly upwards and float. It's kind of like a little bit like flying, but also kind of not. And uh, because I've already got some mastery trained with this, my skimmer will most likely float up higher than yours will. In fact, not most likely, just it will. So once you unlock that, you'll be able to get your skimmer flying out real high as well. But uh, yeah, until then, uh, you can't really. So yeah, that's one of the things you can do to complete this heart. Another one is just play with baby skimmers. You do that by running them over. It's super weird, I know. Like, I wouldn't really count playing with them as, like, j just going near them and basically, like, bumping into them but apparently they get love hearts over their heads and they're like yeah you played with me i like you i don't get it i really really don't get it uh, another thing you can also find is just random forge raiding this area i'm pretty sure that the forge will um also uh the forge will um at sometimes attack this place with an event and uh that person there um helga th they don't know it but they actually were showing off very well uh, the correct way to heal these people, because that's another way you can complete this event. You pretty much go over and heal these injured villagers. However, you use it with the mounts and you heal them with the mounts engage skills. So you line it up, press one on your keyboard, and then you will like zoom forward. And as you zoom over the villagers, you will heal them. But one thing you really don't want to do is like, imagine this was my skimmer. And you were using the heal ability. You don't want to do it, like you don't want to do it pointing this way because then you fly into the um, quicksand and you will pretty much kill yourself immediately because 
once the mount engage skill is over, as you can see here, you will fly off the mount. So if you fly off the mount into the quicksand, I think you can tell where I'm going with this. It's not good. You will generally die. Yeah. So uh, that pretty much covers it, honestly. Once you've completed the heart, you just talk to the lady. Oh, uh, I think one thing I forgot to cover earlier that you will need to get a skimmer is four gold. But I mean, honestly, that's a kind of a drop in the ocean to most people. If you do the enough Pass of Fire stuff, you get plenty of rare gear, which can be currently sold for around roughly 20 silver each. The price rarely goes higher or dips. It's generally very stable, a good source of income. Uh, the piñata event, like I mentioned right at the start, will be a good way to earn money. And if you're really strapped for cash, just uh, maybe do the daily twice. That'll also earn you enough money to do this. So honestly, yeah, that covers it. That's how to get a skimmer in Guild Wars 2. Thanks for watching this extremely short guide. I hope it was useful for you. And uh, yeah. Feel free to tune in for uh, any more of the guides you want to learn how to get any more of the mounts. Bye for now, though.